since we have arrived at 10,000 videos for this channel, let's get into the symbolism of that number. Let's start with the placement, mostly up and down, with above, or is that north-south and vertical or horizontal, and the realities of the pole are depths and center, or primacy and north. And in sequence in the Bible, we arrive at first, at Second Kings seventeen sixteen. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even to calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served Baal. And, of course, the making graven images and the worshipping them are listed as separate commandments. I'm not sure that um, drawing a face is something to include on a list of ten commandments, if people are going to walk away with ten, but or even 13, or... We need remember that if the term is Yahweh al or Yahweh Elohim, we're not... Lord does not translate any part of that. Um, and Baal is this idea that, you know, there's this other Lord. M much how the Christians think of this, you know, Lord, Son of God idea. Now, there's different ball myths, so people think, well, it, it doesn't mean that in this one one. Yeah, that's not the case, right? Um, and to look at two verses with the number value, we first arrive at Matthew 10.21. And uh, I'm, I'm referring to the Aramea. Uh, well, oh, oh, I'm, I'm referring to the Greek. We don't have any verses in tonic. Um, and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And, yeah, people and their agendas will turn against their own family. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father of the son, and children rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And, you know, this is in context of the people fighting over whether or not to accept the, the faith. And now people are persecuted for their faith, and that's, that's one thing. But they shouldn't uh, fight with others because they're, you know accepting or not accepting any particular part. Um, if we look at the trumps, we're going to get the skill of innocence is not a void or just ideas, but it transcends that. And we also arrive at the plan is not within or without the system, but of the other side. And we particularly think of that sort of thing when we come to the whole politics thing. Um, and... You know, lest I don't have time or something, but let's do a summary before we get to them later. Judges 4, 1 through 7 and 14, you know, gives the context of the number 10,000 being about defeating oppressors. Or, you know, it's in that context. Uh, Leviticus 26, 7 refers to cowards. Deuteronomy 32, 30, power lost in stagnation. Judges 7, 2 to 35, necessary portion. Judges 3, 12 to 15 and 29, desire-driven enemies. 1 Corinthians 4, 15, number is not so important. 1 Corinthians 14, 19, variety is not so important. Revelation 5, 11, the largest number is on God's side, is the thing. Well, there's
there's different ways to look at numbers, but koala, Hima under net face, a alarm time staring at you, and what if time could be reversed at the flick of a switch played back, time should not devour you, but the bigger take leisure and koala. Crown, jewel, wife, queen, Zion. Dates, the mystery, day, I gets to wed, and that 70th gate, seven seals. Now, does that have something to do with, um, like your ten centers? Crown... Wisdom, understanding, mercy, judgment or fear, beauty, splendor. Perseverance, Foundation, Kingdom, or whatever you want to call them, right? The gate being implied, but nucle you know, per each gate passing through with those parts for yourself, but nuclear fusions in segment and net cores at spin in both dual sun and single sun Solar system, latter, second, dices, build, some corbits, doesn't detract you from sun being half of the universe singled out, genuine sun, zodiac. Now, a venture that at some point the AI can make finding gematria and all scriptures or whatever, and even variations, easier. Not just, okay, you look at this verse and what's the number value of the verse, and that's about all you can figure out, but it also might uh, only include the ones that were spelled right, not just what people type into the engines and the grammar, but then again, one feels like there may be some censorship going on when it gets to that. Now, Revelations 5, 11 is for some people the peak, so, but, uh, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. And, of course, it was important that we got into the thing of not worshipping the numbers, right? Turn back the hands of time, and we get 1 Corinthians fourteen nineteen. Of course, we can say that since the book of Revelations even though it's a rewrite in Christian context from the 90s, the first decade of the Common Era was, you know, when you got its origins, so the Pauline stuff actually comes later. But, you know, um, so 1419 comes out, yet in the church, I had rather speak. Five words with my understanding, that my my voice, I might teach others also, than ten thousand words in an unknown language. It's not that you don't transmit the originals and stuff as best you can, but you, you better convey the meaning 
when it comes to a spiritual message. 4.15 of 1 Corinthians. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. And so see, no matter what the material culture, no matter what the psychological differences, there should be a unity if you really are in of, you know, the, the faith. And what matters is the anointing with it, not, you know, not necessarily the rest of it. Judges 3, 12 through 15 and 29. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. You know, presume we mean Yahweh. Because I think they say Lord so much to confuse with the idea of Jesus. Lord is spiritual master and God, a different type of Lord. But um, And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek, but went and smote Israel and possessed the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, eighteen years. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera. See, this is what the deliverers are, the a serve a physical, a psychological role. They don't serve a spiritual, vicarious role. A Benjamite, a man, left-handed, and sent by him. The children of Israel sent a prophet unto Eglon, the king of Moab. So that would have re refuted some superstitions about people who were left-handed. That's why it was done. And of course, the people could handle it. And the verse that is put by itself, uh, you know, 29... And they slew of Moab at that time about 10,000 men, all lusty and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. So see, that kind of breaks away a lot of the homophobia and stuff too, is that, hey, even if they are people who are going above and beyond to seek out their pleasures, um, it doesn't mean they don't have the the bravery and other good traits in the rest of their life, right? Um, judges 7, 2 to 35. And, you know, God is a noun and verb, would be Yahweh, not Lord, said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites in their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. You know, hence the reference of a selection process. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, and the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people under the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By three hundred men that lapped, well, I save you. No, I guess 25, not 35, but... Um, 
and deliver the Midianites unto thine hand, and let all other people go every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand, and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel every man unto his tent, and retained those three hundred men, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Farah, thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down to the host. And then went he down with Furah his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host, and the Midianites, and the Amalekites, and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number, as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled unto the host of Midian, and came unto a tent, and smote it, that it fell, and overturned it, that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered, and said, This is nothing else, save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For into his hand hath God delivered Midian, and all the host. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped, and returned into the host of Israel, and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand, with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that, as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came out of the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in the right hands, to blow withal. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood, every man in his place, round about the camp, and all the host ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Beth Shta in Zerarath, and to the border of Apple Mehola unto Tabith, and the men of Israel gathered themselves out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of all Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites, and Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Isn't it Aperim? But so I, I don't know what, what all the pronunciations of these terms are using the Aramia text, but saying, Come down against the Midianites and take before them the waters into Beth, Bara, and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters into Beth, Bara, and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew Oreb upon the rock Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb, and pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of the Jordan. Now, I'm personally not on, uh, at least not on my channel, um, and not in my personal life, recommending this thing of dismemberment um, and carrying off trophies or cutting of necks off of battlefields. But um, Judges 4, 1 through 7 and 14. 
So, yeah. The the Bible says this is nothing to do, but like they 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 act like Islam recommends this stuff and it's like, no, dude, that's in the Bible. <laughs> um there there was even the even the uh oh what was those guys the the liberal Turks or what what are they called? Um I don't watch it, so I, I you know, um Anyways, Judges 4, 1 through 7. And the children of Israel did again evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. Um, in the Quran, it addresses that sort of fanaticism of the turning your backs when the messenger dies or gets killed, you know. Um, it's, you know, that, because that's not what it's about, you know. It's not about whether the leader is alive or not, but people very often do that sort of thing. And anyways, and the Lord sold them under the hand of Javan, king of Canaan. You know, there's no J or V sounds in, you know, the, what we call the Old Testament, the, the script that it's based on. That reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harosheth of the Gentiles. By Gentiles, I'm sure they mean those who've turned their backs on God. But then again, they use these as slurs, and we don't want to use them as slurs. We want to mean it when somebody's a Gentile or an infidel or heathen or pagan or something. And it, you know, um, heathen and pagan are also some, are something that has nothing to do with religion in its Greco-Roman usage, but... And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and the children of Zebulun, and I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon Sisera the captain of Jebin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And, okay, we are... Skip six verses, and we got, And Deborah said unto Barak, Up for this day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera unto thine hands. Is not the Lord gone before me, that before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor, and 10,000 men after him. So we have the chosen from 10,000, and we come up with the 10,000 have chosen. In Leviticus 26, 7, and ye shall cause, uh, she, you shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And the next verse, and five of you shall chase an hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. And Deuteronomy would be the last of the Pentateuch, but Joshua would be um, what would typically... It, it seems that originally you had Hexateuch. Um, but Deuteronomy 32.30. How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? And... 
So, you know, a, a rock, you know, you, you had a cube or a square, and something in the cube or the square, it was representative of your true self, it was a representative of deity, because deity was lasting, a true idea of deity, not not all these things on the periphery that are, that are phenomena, but of course you refer the phenomena to deity, of course, um, but you don't have to, uh, you know, have to fall into worshipping the various, you know, directional or celestial or, or whatever, whatever deities to go for that, but, you know, there's, there's different foundations, so it does matter what you worship and how you worship and all that stuff. Um, but remember the sage directs the oracle, doesn't merely consult it. So if you can find any further meaning for these things, do tell. Um, your application, your, your usage of what I've shared here is, you know, your responsibility, what you're going to believe or do about these things. But I'm just saying some options of what can be put forward for this, I guess, the next video, 10,001, so, um, maybe include a little bit of the 10,000 thing, because you're just beyond the 10,000 in the next video of that.